Joining us now to discuss is the CNN political analyst who first broke the rumblings of this story in a Washington Post op-ed, Josh Rogan. He is also the author of Chaos Under Heaven, Trump, Xi, and the Battle for the 21st Century. And as we mentioned, Josh, athletes will still go, right? Just to be very clear, people here boycott, the athletes are still going. So what is the effect of this? Is this about shaming China? Well, Brianna, as we discuss, have discussed, this is a half measure. This is a compromise. The athletes can go, the diplomats can't go. It's a kind of like what I call a Goldilocks approach. Not too hot, not too cold. The administration is trying to get it just right. And yes, they met, the idea is to send a message that the Chinese government can't use the Olympics to bolster its legitimacy and get people to shut up about its genocide. And that, you know, while athletes will have to make their own decisions, corporations will have to make their own decisions, and viewers and fans will have to make their own decisions, uh, the U.S. government is not going to be the one to go to Beijing and say, uh, everything's fine here, because everything's not fine, because uh, the Chinese government is perpetrating mass atrocities against Uyghur Muslims, forced labor, uh, forced orphanages, forced abortions, all of that stuff. So, you know, it doesn't solve the problem. It just doesn't let the Chinese government use the games to, uh, uh, to whitewash these atrocities. And so in that sense, it's better than nothing. So you, you mentioned the, the atrocities in Xinjiang, right, and, and, and outlying areas there. What about Peng Shui? the tennis player who accused a former vice premier of sexual misconduct, and the, the World Tennis Organization has pulled out all of its uh, involvement in China. Did that play into this at all? Yeah, well, it's, it's, you're absolutely right that there are lots of other atrocities going on uh, in China right now. The disappearance of tennis star Peng Shui and her apparently staged reappearance uh, is important because it comes right before the Olympics. And the International Olympics Committee helped the Chinese government um, make a hostage video and uh, whitewash the disappearance of Peng Shui, as was pointed out uh, on State of the Union yesterday. And, you know, it's not directly related to this decision, of course, because the Biden administration was planning to do this either way. But what it did is it showed that not all sports organizations have to immediately roll over when the Chinese government says shut up. And the, the Women's Tennis Association, very, in my opinion, very courageously and very bravely, sacrificed a lot of money and uh, stood up for the things that they believed in and stood up for their athletes, especially their women athletes, and whereas the IOC did the exact opposite thing. Uh, so it just goes to show you that although the Chinese government is very rich and very powerful, uh, they can't bully everybody. And if you do stand up, uh, you know, you don't actually get punished that bad. And of course, that still doesn't help Peng Shui, who still seems to be missing in action. How does China see this move? Well, it's clear that, you know, China doesn't like it. I don't think they're supposed to like it. You know, I, in my experience uh, as a journalist, it's very rare that genocidal regimes uh, enjoy having their genocides put, uh, pointed out. You know, they, it's just not a thing that they want. Uh, but, you know, I think we make this mistake often in the Washington and actually in the media by focusing on how our reaction to a genocide uh, is provocative rather than the actual genocide. I don't mean it like that. I mean, how does China receive this? Is this actually a lesson that they take and they absorb and they do something about? That's a good point. I don't think it will convince them to stop the genocide, but I think it will, it could make them think twice about doing even worse stuff, at least before the Olympics happens. In other words, they know that the eyes of the world are on them. They know that when they disappear a tennis star or if they, you know, uh, uh, do any of the other things that they're doing, at least for these couple of months, people care. After the Olympics are over, I think that's the real test. When the cameras turn away, and we don't have any more diplomatic boycott, the genocide will still be ongoing. So I think the real test is sort of, is this popular uh, you know, uh, uh, um, sentiment that genocide is bad and that we should stand up to it, will that survive after the games go away? And I think that's what the Chinese government is looking for as well. And I think they're still hoping that like, after the Olympics, the world will turn away. And uh, to be honest, I don't know uh, what's going to happen. I don't know if we will or we won't. But you know, I, for one, am hoping that we won't. And I'm hoping for one that the Chinese government will learn eventually that genocides can't be ignored or, or uh, whitewashed. We'll keep tracking it along with you. I don't know. I don't think the spotlight of the Olympics has done a whole lot to deter China, as we've seen. Josh, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.